why the Serum Institute has now applied through AstraZeneca for the European medicine agencies not to get the Covishield vaccine approved for the European Union's Green Pass, which means that you can travel freely within European states. However, today the, uh, it was clarified that you can still go to individual countries like Switzerland, which have allowed vaccinated Indians to travel there, that Covishield is accepted by individual European countries because this is WHO approved. Let's just look now at the COVID numbers. Well, we're at less than 40,000 new cases for the first time in over three months. The case in the last 24 hours are just over 37,500. So cases down, deaths are also down just over 900. Also, the tests in the last 24 hours is 17,68,000. The tests are up from the Sunday's low. Daily positivity rate is also at 2.12%. That's down as well. So let's just look at tracking those cases, uh, 40,000 daily new cases, we're less than that after 102 days. So we can see there really March 19th was when we were just below 48,000 and now June 29th, three months it's taken us to come back to 37,000. Deaths now less than 1,000 deaths, two days in a row. Again at April 13th, we were 18, 879 deaths. Now we are back to just over 907 today on the 29th of June. So we can see there that spiral. But let's just look at the vaccination numbers today where we dipped far below the average we've seen since last week of 53 lakh doses a day. Today numbers are much slower. In many states, uh, Rajasthan, etc., they're saying that they don't have the vac uh, vaccine latest supply for this week and this month yet. So perhaps that's why uh, vaccinations have dipped after what's been a pretty good average in the last week. Well, moving to the other big headline, the Prime Minister today held a high-level meeting with the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, who's just back from Ladakh, also the Home Minister Amit Shah, and the National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. According to sources, the discussions are mainly on the new futuristic challenges the defence sector has seen at Jammu's uh, airstrike via a drone, and also on how to equip our forces with modern equipment to retaliate. This comes as intelligence in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. The Jammu and Kashmir DGP has told NDTV that a Lashkar link is being closely investigated. Is there a connection between the attack on the Jammu airbase on Sunday and the blast outside the residence of the Mumbai attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed in Lahore on the 23rd of June? Intelligence agencies claim it cannot be ruled out. The Lashkar came under immense pressure after blasts in Lahore last week. In fact, Jammu Kashmir Police DGP Dilbag Singh told NDTV that the initial probe into the attacks on the airbase reveals that the Lashkar might be behind the attack as the terror outfit has the capability to operate weaponized drones. Drones spotted and thwarted at the Kaluchak and Ratnachak army bases also seem to belong to the Lashkar. A 22-year-old operative of the TRF, a Lashkar front outfit, was arrested by the JNK police and a 4-kilo package of IED was found on him. The situation on the ground also suggests that Lashkar activity has increased in Jammu and Kashmir over the last one week. Not taking any chances, Indian agencies have raised an alert in areas near security assets. ये टेक्नोलॉजिकल थ्रेट है इसको टेक्नोलॉजी के थ्रू भी हम लोग रिस्पांस करेंगे और उसमें हम लोग काफी डिप्लॉयमेंट कर लिए क्योंकि ये स्ट्रेटजिक इंपॉर्टेंस है जितने वाइटल इंस्टेंस है इसको भी प्लस एलसी पर भी इंटरेस्टिंगली इंडिया आल्सो रेज्ड इट्स कंसर्न ओवर ड्रोन्स बीइंग यूज्ड एज वेपन्स विद द यूनाइटेड नेशंस इन अ स्टेटमेंट टू द जनरल असेंबली इंडिया हैज सेड द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ द यूज ऑफ वेपनाइज्ड ड्रोन्स फॉर टेररिस्ट पर्पसेस अगेंस्ट स्ट्रेटजिक एंड कमर्शियल एसेट्स कॉल्स फॉर सीरियस अटेंशन बाय द मेंबर स्टेट्स Meanwhile, India's Tech Intelligence Agency, the National Technical Research Organization, has been asked by the Home Ministry to monitor the frequencies on which low-flying drones operate. With Neeta Sharma in New Delhi, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. Let's move with the other big political story. Well, Navjot Singh Sidhu, a rebel Congress leader who is in the middle of a high-pitched battle with the Punjab Chief Minister Amrinder Singh, told reporters yesterday that he'd been asked to come to Delhi to meet with Rahul and Priyanka Gandhi. He left today with the media covering him from his home in Punjab. But when he reached, he was told that there was no meeting scheduled and no meeting likely tomorrow as well. So that round perhaps goes to Captain Amrinder Singh in this battle of Congress versus Congress. But another threat for the Congress Chief Minister is the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who has launched his campaign officially in Punjab, announcing 300 units free power for all and 24-7 power if the AAP is elected in Punjab's assembly elections.
Navjot Singh Sidhu leaving for Delhi to meet Rahul Gandhi and his sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra except there was no meeting After waiting the whole day Rahul Gandhi was surprised to see so many journalists waiting outside his house and asked why are so many people waiting outside and he was quite categorical in saying that there was no schedule to meet Navjot Singh Sidhu today वो कभी भी राहुल जी से प्रियंका जी से मिल सकते हैं इसमें कहीं कोई दिक्कत नहीं है इसमें कहीं किसी तरीके की बाधा नहीं है सिद्धू हैज बीन क्रिटिकल ऑफ इस पार्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर अमरिंदर सिंह जस्ट मंथ्स अहेड ऑफ द असेंबली इलेक्शन कैंपेन फोर्सिंग द सेंट्रल लीडरशिप टू होल्ड अ सीरीज ऑफ ट्रूस मीटिंग इवन सेटिंग द चीफ मिनिस्टर अ डेड लाइन टू लुक इन टू द डिमांड ऑफ सिद्धू एंड अदर डिसिडेंट्स Back in Chandigarh Amrinder Singh faced another challenger Delhi's AAP chief minister Arvind Kejriwal who effectively launched his political campaign with a series of ambitious promises Back in Chandigarh the Punjab chief minister faced another challenger today Delhi's AAP Aadmi Party chief minister Arvind Kejriwal who effectively launched his party's election campaign with a series of ambitious promises Mr Kejriwal promised 300 units of free electricity per month to each household if the aam aadmi party comes to power punjab is currently facing power outages punjab mein aam aadmi party ki sarkar har parivar ko 300 units tak bijli muft degi jitne purane bill hain domestic ke jitne purane bill hain sare maaf kiye jayenge 24 This promise takes on the Congress directly, as it had already asked the CM to provide free 200 units to all households. Delhi me pending billon ko Kejriwal ne maaf kar diya. Kya Delhi ke logon ko bijli ka bill nahi aa raha? Baara, baara, pandra, pandra rupee unit ke hisab se bijli ka bill aa raha hai. Safai karmchariyon ke kitne bill aa rahe jo thikhe pe bharti hue hain? With 24% vote share in the last elections, Aam Aadmi Party is the largest opposition. Combined with the Congress's infighting, Aam Aadmi Party's power promises and the Akali's tie-up with the BSP, Amrinder Singh's battle for re-election seems to have begun. With Muhammad Ghazali and Sunil Prabhu, Joshua Chin for NDTV. And well, the other battle, this of course of a current government, the Maharashtra government. Today's meeting between the Chief Minister Udhav Thakre and NCP leader Sharad Pawar has sparked much speculation, sort of, as the details. But of course, sort of, this comes amid uh, much speculation over whether there's a growing Sena BJP closeness. Absolutely, and uh, Sharad Pawar and Udhav Thakre met one on one, even though there were several other cabinet ministers present at that meeting. officially it was to discuss the state corporations and the speaker's election remember the last speaker resigned and became the state congress chief so that post has fallen vacant and officially it was on that but sources say that the current issues that have cropped up in the last few weeks especially the you know rumors about the sena's growing closeness to the bjp is something that was thrashed out in this meeting the one on one meeting between sharad pawar and uddhav thakre here meanwhile another important meeting is also taking place the ncp is discussing the implications of the ed raids on anil deshmukh that's happening right behind me here and the chief minister's residence is of course on the other side of the road and here of course supriya sule and all other important ncp leaders are present the ncp suspects that the ed could go as far as arresting deshmukh which is why they are chalking out a strategy to deal with the implications right uh, right sorob thanks very much uh, for that update so interesting political times there but meanwhile the real battle seems to be between well the center and twitter with more and more fas now being registered against twitter every day arvin what's the latest because we now have three states who filed four fars on various reasons against twitter and its executives Yeah, uh, Sonia. As on date, four FIRs have been registered against Twitter across the country. Of these four FIRs, two have been registered by Uttar Pradesh Police and one by Madhya Pradesh Police and one by Delhi Police. So, of these four FIRs, three have been registered now. Of these three FIRs that have been registered now, two have been registered, one by UP Police and second one by Madhya Pradesh Police. for the uh, distorted map on the micro blogging uh, website so taking cognizance of the private complaint both the up police and also the madhya pradesh police 
have registered a case against Twitter executives, including the Twitter India MD Manish Maheshwari. A stringent a section 505 of IPC has right. been invoked in both the FIRs. So that deals with Manish Maheshwari has been charged for creating enmity between two communities. So that's two cases. The third affair has been registered by Delhi police acting on the complaint from NCPCR, that, that mm -hmm. is the National uh, Children Commission. So that particular case, the Delhi police has invoked the most stringent POXO Act against both the Twitter India and also the Twitter uh, incorporation, the Twitter International, etc. Though the executives have not been named as an accused in this particular case, but that particular case pertains to the allegation of allowing child abuse uh, content on its uh, platform. Absolutely, and, and that's, that's acting on the NCPC complaint. All the based on, I think, once, once the telecom minister said that Twitter's protection that it enjoyed as a, a really, in that sense, an intermediary, it's now a publisher, so it's responsible for everything on its platform. According to the government, this, of course, hasn't been decided by the courts yet. Twitter also hasn't got to court about this. So this really uh, battle which is growing. Remember, journalists have also been charged in Uttar Pradesh as well for uh, the video of an assault of an elderly man. In fact, the crime of the assault on the elderly man seems to have been forgotten. But how politics is dominating? Let's just look at what's happening in West Bengal, where the team of the National Human Rights Commission was allegedly attacked. So you can see those visuals there of villagers seeming to gather around and uh, shouting at them. They are there to investigate allegations of post-poll violence. You can see there they're being protected uh, by security forces, but they are say, uh, the NHRC is saying that this is what's happening to us. Can you imagine what's happening to ordinary people? There's no uh, response to that yet from the state government. Meanwhile, moving to another case from Kashmir, which it really had become extremely controversial. It reached the Home Minister. Now, this is about what uh, some Sikh groups were claiming was the conversion, the forced conversion and kidnapping of Sikh girls from the community. Now, within 24 hours, an 18-year-old girl who had said in a court that she had eloped with a man of her own will it has now been returned to her family. The man has been arrested for kidnapping and the young woman has been married within 24 hours. 19-year-old Manmeet with her new husband, Sukhbir Singh. She has been in the middle of a controversy which has reached the Home Minister's door. With Akali Dal leaders protesting about four girls allegedly converted to Islam and forced to marry Muslims in Jammu and Kashmir. While Manmeet told the court that she had converted and later married to a Muslim man on her own free will, she was brought back by the police and her family and local Akali leaders now say there was no wedding. Now, she has married a Sikh man. However, according to documents submitted by Manmeet in court, the Muslim man had paid a meher of 2 lakh rupees and a trousseau. Sikh groups say that they met Muslim community leaders and decided that there was no marriage before today. Our relationship was made by Mir Vahedwanos and the Muslim community. All of us who have given us the support, we will not be able to According to Jammu and Kashmir Akali leaders, there are four Sikh girls who were in the past forced to convert and marry Muslim men. They have asked to meet Home Minister Amit Shah on the issue. Meanwhile, the other woman, also allegedly forced to convert to Islam, has released a video denying the allegations. I am not a convert the legal position of the case has completely been overshadowed by politics. Soon after her second marriage, Manmeet Kaur was shifted to Delhi. For now, both Muslim and Sikh leaders in Kashmir are happy that crisis has been resolved. But except her statement recorded before a magistrate in Srinagar, no one knows what 19-year-old had to say. In Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi for NDTV.